Welcome to this week's layout. I'm Anita with beingdesigns.com and I'm here to help you create awesome digital scrapbook layouts by sharing my layouts with you. This is week 23 of my 52 digi scrap layouts in 52 weeks using GIMP, which is a free open source Photoshop alternative. The most recent version of GIMP at the time of this recording is 2.10.20, which is the version I'm using. See my other tutorials on the channel for how I set up my GIMP for optimal use in creating digital scrapbook layouts. I have my papers and my elements here lined up ready to go on this week's layout. This week's layout is going to have three photos. It's going to look like this, and it is the counterpart to last week's layout, which was this. So we're going to get started with this one. I have already opened my new image. It's 3600 by 3600 pixels at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch so that I can print it into a high quality photograph or a bound book for my wedding album. I have three photos here on my layout. I cropped and scaled them to be this, these two to be squares and then this one to be the highlight photo. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop my two papers. One is going to be the background main paper and the other one will be a large mat on the layout similarly or exactly like last week's. So let's go ahead and reorder those on the layer palette. I'm going to remove that background layer. So we just have our five layers here. So I'm going to use the crop tool and the tool options to draw me a rectangle on our matte layer. I want it to be the full 3600 pixels tall vertical and I want it to be 2800 pixels horizontally. I'm going to go ahead and click inside the highlighted area and that will remove the outer portion. Well, it did not because I was on the blue layer. So let's go ahead and edit resize layer. So we undid that. Let's go to the correct layer and redo it. So let me draw let me draw my rectangle, make it 3600 pixels vertically, 2800 pixels horizontally. Click on it, it'll remove the outer portion like I wanted it to before. Let me use my move tool and I'm going to just move this into place here in the center of our layout. I'm going to now bring in this str bead string onto our layout. It is horizontal so we'll want to rotate it. So you just right click on your transform tool, make sure that that layer is active, click on it. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. Click the rotate button to activate it and I can use my move tool to move it. Let's duplicate that and move it over to the right. I'm going to right click on the transform and do flip and I'm going to choose vertically. You can tell that it's a vertical flip. It's right here on our layout. You can see where my cursor is. You see the up and down arrows. So that means it's going to flip it vertically. If I had clicked horizontally, you can see that it's over here on the layout. It has horizontal arrows. So let's flip it vertically. And then I can use my move tool to put it into place. On this layout, I actually want the bead string to be on top of the photos. 
So let me reorder the layer there and place. I just don't want the beads to be exactly the same on both sides. I want them to have some variation. So let's put that. So we put this swirly part here and this swirly part there. If you remember from last week's, these bead strings are longer than the layout, longer than the image size. So we're going to make the layer to image size, then make this one the active layer, layer, layer to image size. It just makes it all compact and I, right then when I clicked on the display navigation, it grabbed it off of my toolbar so I can just put it right back there. Now I have the flowers to bring onto our layout. So let's bring in the pinkish flower and the white flower and the blue flower and then the center for the blue flower. So we're going to have a pink flower over here. We're going to have a pink flower here. We're going to have a pink flower down here. We're going to size these scale 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 then we're going to this is the blue flower so let's put a blue flower let's go ahead and make this blue flower smaller. The blue flower is a little, quite a bit smaller than the pink one. I'm going to duplicate that once more. And let's make the center smaller. I can grab the center of the tool there and let's duplicate that let's go ahead and grab let's put uh reset move we want to move this here move this one here so we're going to put a pink one and a blue one and a white one down here we want a blue one up here Let's move to our white flower scale, duplicate, duplicate. So we just have a cluster of three here, a cluster of two. Let's make that pink one. Let's find it. Let's put it on top. There we go. And a cluster of three right down here. Pretty simple layout matches its counterpart yesterday from last week. I'll add dimension, duplicate that bottom layer, use a feathered and rounded selection select on that duplicated layer, delete it, add a multiply mode, and reduce the opacity on it. For more information on adding dimension to your digital scrapbook layout, check out my tutorial on that found in on the channel. I would go ahead and go through the process of moving up my layer palette, adding dimension, 
inking the edges on my photos, adding shadows to them, all of the elements. I would then save it in the XCF format that preserves all of the layers for my file in case I want to come back and make any changes. I would also save it as a JPEG so that I could print it into my album. And then I would reduce the size to a 72 pixels per inch for sharing with anyone who would like to see it digitally. That completes this two page spread. And I would just love to share this template with you. You can um, get a copy of it over on the website at uh, www.beandesigns.com. All you have to do is subscribe to my newsletter. That's like an every other week newsletter. I share a little tidbit of information and update you on what's coming. Um, I will, as always, provide the information on the digital kit that I used for this layout in the description box. And if you liked this, and I hope that you did, check out the channel because there's other layouts there. Uh, actually, 22 to be exact, because this is the 23rd. And there's also tutorials on using GIMP, so just some basic you know, how to do some titles and some setting up your GIMP and all kinds of other stuff. So in the meantime, keep on preserving your memories for your future generations by doing your digital scrapbooking. And bye-bye until next week.